All right, we've been talking about EQ for the past few days. By the way, I'll try to do this video in under 15 minutes of my time. Let's see if I'm able to do this. I'm gonna put this here so you can see. So we've been talking about mixing. We've uh, talked a lot about EQ, but not just about that. We've showed so many other plugins. We've even done a video where, because I was showing so many plugins and people was like, easy for you. You've got all these plugins, you've got all these libraries, makes sense that your music sounds good, but I don't have anything, it, you know, it, it's, it's very expensive. And so we had the idea of giving away the total amount of value of the plugins used for that specific video. I think that video is still going and the giveaway is still active. Well, we've used these four plugins. This plugin costs 300, it's 200, it's 300. The total is like, I think it was $1,100, so $1,100. And they were gonna give away that in cash to one of our subscribers, but you have to subscribe within five days of that video being published. All right, that being said, in this video, we're gonna make things different. We are not gonna use any plugin. The title of this video is how to make not so good sounding trumpets sound great without using any plugins. So we are not gonna key, we're not gonna add reverb. We are going to use, I'm gonna just, volume automation. And this is usually what I'm, what I'm teaching mixing is the first thing that I teach because so much more effective than anything else. We're gonna use it in a very specific way, but it's so much more effective than any other thing that you can do mo most of the times. And it's cheap, it's free. You just have to have a sequencer. Well, technically you have to pay for the sequencer, but there are some sequencers that are free. Anyway, you get the point, let's, let's go do it. So we're talking about this section here. <music> 10 minutes to go. I've added a little bit of EQ to those trumpets. That's something very solid. It's not what makes the meaningful difference. Let me just show you. Look how minimal this is. It's barely cutting 0.7 dBs at 300 and then adding 1.7 at 8.5 and another 0.7 at 3.8. Just the trumpets without the width. I'm gonna start without, then I'm gonna switch it back in. So yes, it adds a little bit of brightness, but if it, but it's still, mm. all right. So classic trick with sampled libraries, if it doesn't sound good because, because whatever reason, technical limitations, or just maybe the, the quality of the recording or just the, whatever, if that sample library, if that sample doesn't sound the way you would like it to sound, but it's the only thing that you've got, hide it. What, what do you mean hide it? Hide it, hide it? Yes, hide it, like hide, like for example, the, like, the, uh, what? Before legatos, or, or even with legato strings, the transition sometimes is like meh, or for the long strings, long violins, long notes, not legato, long notes, sometimes the attack is not the way you would like it to be. Synchestration technique, have an ARP, like the ARP, just double that melodic line with an ARP. The ARP attack is gonna hide a little bit of the strings long note attack of each note, and it's going to make everything sound better. So that's just one example of using synchestration or orchestration in a clever way, not just to make your music sound the way you want it to sound in terms of orchestration, but also to mitigate some of the sample libraries limitations, whatever that limitation could be. All right, now, do you remember when I always, I always say mixing won't fix any composing mistake. Well, here I am fixing a composing mistake. He's lying, he's lying. The trumpets part is meh. I did it quickly and now when I, the way to compose, Interesting. Is you've got your music going on, you're orchestrated, and you are gonna add the next part. So maybe you've got all the strings and horns, and now you're gonna add the trumpets, and you're gonna write the trumpets as you are listening to the entire thing. I always recommend also soloing the trumpets and listening just the trumpets 
hard and make sure that the performance it's it's spot on that that it works because sometimes we are like composing and we're recording the strings the violins first and the violas and the horns and the trumpets and by the time we get to the trumpets maybe we it's like oh it sounds good enough but if we muted everything and just hear to the trumpets like oh wait a minute let me just fix a few things here that are not perfectly and so that's what happened here it is a little bit mm, eh, mm. so i'm going to use volume automation to do two things First, I'm going to enhance a little bit of the performance to make it sound a little bit more alive and to add a little bit of dynamism to dynamics to the way the trumpet section performs that melody or that part. So that's the first thing. And the second thing, I'm going to also use volume automation to hide the worst parts of that melodic line behind another instrument that is also important in that moment that has an important statement just for a second while the trumpets kind of like get to a better sounding moment like this this part up here horns trumpets what you can see here is volume automation this volume automation for horns it's nothing else that added dynamics like literally riding the fader to add extra volume automation that's gonna make that horns line sound more alive just gonna enhance that melody. Just follow what the melody is trying to say with volume and give it a little bit more when it needs more, a little bit less when it needs less, like the beginning of phrase, end of the phrase, things like this. Same thing with trumpet, but for the trumpet, at that eh, moment, I hit it a little bit. See, this guy here, trumpets, sounding bad, go away. Ah, I failed. Miserably. Shame. I'm gonna show you this, how I do it, and then I'll show you the final result. So we've got the horns coming in here, and because I recorded the automation earlier, you can see the fader moving. I don't necessarily recommend this controller. This is the BCF2000. It is not very precise and very noisy, but it was very cheap. When I got 2LA 2016, I bought this used. Now I'm gonna do the trumpets, which is uh, this one here. Now, if we hear the trumpets without automation, here's how they sound. It's okay. I think what happened is like there are a few samples, a few notes in there that are a little bit out of tune. And so the my performance wasn't great when I was recording trumpets, but also the sound there's a moment that it's like ah oh. and so that's what I'm going to hide. And I'm gonna do that while I'm recording that automation that's gonna enhance the good parts and the kind of like the dynamics of the melody. It's gonna make it feel like like a real human actually performed that we're gonna add a little bit to to to, to the samples that that's a very common thing to do let's just do it so first things first i'm gonna activate write automation and now as i move this guy you're gonna see it being written being recorded here here we go thing it sort of worked but you get the point this is the awkward moment that we are hiding this part is good towards the end we're gonna push it a little bit up for the final crescendo dynamics up and down a little bit of fluctuation here all these things make the, the sample this line feel a little bit more alive <laughs> a lot of things that you do before before a piece is done there are so many small little things and details from the composing stage mixing mastering there's so many things that we do to make that music sound the way we hear it when it's done like we will hear we will listen to music from another composer and usually we will get depressed it's like oh it sounds so good because we are comparing the final result to our first steps like when we are start, we, we start composing okay i've got to compose this music and it's like okay what's the reference track and we are listening to that reference track that is a finished 
piece of music it's the finished produced piece of music and if you are taking as reference something like a, like a hollywood soundtrack that that is not a composer who's composed that to keep this simple the composer did the mock-up but there's an orchestrator that did the orchestration there's a whole group of people that recorded like the orchestra there's someone that records the orchestra mixing engineer and maybe the same person or someone else that's gonna mix that music we're gonna combine the orchestra recordings with samples as well to get the most out of it there's a big budget there's a lot of time to do things like this. sometimes there's not a lot of time but there's a big budget there's a team to do that and then finally they do two mixes the one that goes to the movie and the one that goes to like, the soundtrack sort of for the album it's such a long process and there is so much money that they invest in making that sound as good as possible. They've got the best gear, the best library, the best musicians, the best mixing engineers, the best everything. And it's a lot of time from beginning to end. Don't, it's like, it's like social media usually is the best version of that person. Um, like Instagram and all that with the filters, the, the like finished piece of music is kind of like the same thing. But I just kind of wanted to show you all the details, all the intricacies, the, all the things that we do um, that make the music sound a little bit better and a little better and a bit, a bit, a bit. And all these small little details that are super subtle, but when you put them all together is what makes a piece of music sound good. This is the perfect time for me to pitch the course. It would make such a smooth transition, but I'm just not going to do it. Link in the description. See you tomorrow. Subscribe. Bye-bye. All right, we're back. Ah, ah, crap. I hit my finger with this.